Okay, students, welcome to another episode of Finding Roots. Now, I call this part two only because this is the second method I'm going to show you guys of how to find a root. The method we are going to use today is called the newton raphson method. Last video in part one, I believe we used the uh, bisection method. Now, it's up to you to determine which method you think produces the more accurate values. Also, it depends on if the question specifically is asking you to use a particular method. So this is how you would apply, or rather, what the newton raphson method actually is. So the newton raphson method is a formula. And the formula looks like this. It is given by Take note that that F prime represents differentiation. So you'll notice also that a lot of those topics you would have revised previously, basic maths, basic differentiation, partial fractions, they all seem to be integrated and intertwined into other topics. So it is essential that when you are doing questions of this nature, that you go back and review some of those uh, subtopics so that if they do pop up, such as in the newton raphson method, differentiation must be a strong point of yours. Now, the formula just simply states that if you wish to find a root using the newton raphson method, then the root is simply given by x sub n plus 1, where x to the sub n is simply your first approximation that you can use. Your first approximation may be given in the question, and if it isn't, you can tend to try to observe the values of the intervals they have given in which the root lies, and you can choose a value that lies between. Sometimes people frequently use one of these. Now let's see how this formula applies for this question. Well, first to begin with, our function, we will let our function be equal to x cubed plus 2x minus 2. Also, you'll notice that the formula entails a differential, so we will differentiate our function as well, so we can get the resultant function. So now that we have two uh, values in which our numbers can be substituted. Let's go ahead and apply the newton raphson method. So first up, observing that they said the root lies between 0 and 1, and the question did not specify the first approximation, we are going to let our first approximation of x sub 1 be equal to 1. So notice we have chosen that upper interval value. When you're choosing once again, make sure you choose your values between which the root lies. So using this first approximation, what we are going to get applying this newton raphson method is that x to the 1 is going to be equal to, sorry, x2. You already have the first value, so you're going to find second value. And this will take place when n has a value of 1. So xn plus 1 would imply that you have 1 plus 1. So this n is really x sub 1. Applying this successfully, you will get x sub 1 minus f of x sub 1 all over 
f differentiated x sub 1. So let's go ahead and substitute these values and see what we get. Well, we would get x1, which is our first value, is 1. f of x1 means that they want to find f of 1. And they also want to find f of 1 at which the function is differentiated. This is simply equal to 1 subtract f of 1 will be 1 cubed plus 2 by 1 minus 2 all over. Substituting 1 into the differentiated format gives us 3 by 1 squared, which is just 3. I think I'll write it in plus 2. Now, after being very careful and substituting this into our calculator, what we end up getting is that x2 has a value of 0 0.8. And from here, it's simply a repetitive process where we now find x3. And x3 will take place when we have x2 plus f of the previous value over f prime of the previous value. Substituting your values, you would get, you would substitute 0 0.8 into your function. That gives us 0 0.8. I'm sorry, it's a subtraction. You get 0 0.8 cubed plus 2 by 0 0.8, subtract 2, all over 3 by 0 0.8. 8 squared plus 2. And this gives us a value of 0 0.77142. Now, I'll stop here for a moment and I will highlight that you should keep your answers on your calculator if possible. Now, on some calculators, there's the ability to store values as an answer, and then you can directly substitute the entire value directly into a function. Doing this, substituting the most accurate value as possible tends to give us the most precise answer. If you were to cut this answer short and substitute it into your formula, you may end up getting incorrect values or values which are not accurate enough. So try your best when doing this method. Even though the method is very straightforward and simple, what you want to do or look at or consider is when you are using these values that are generated, you use either the full substitution of what your screen shows or you try to save your answer into your screen so that you can substitute it directly. Now, moving forward, I will just state some of the values that we ended up with. X4 would just simply be equal to the previous value minus F of the previous value over F prime of the previous value. I think you guys are getting the hint of what's going on. So it'll be 0 0.77142 dot 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 minus f of that same value, da da da, over da da da. I wrote the dots to apply the fact that we are entering the full uh, value that the screen shows. All right, and this gives us a value of uh, 0 0.7709. Then Substituting a further time, you'd move on to get x5, and I'll just state the value because I think you are getting the hang of the method now. Dot, 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 dot. All right, now how do we know when to stop? Once again, you have to go back to your question, and the question is asking us to find the answer for the root correct to two decimal places. So 
for all these methods, the stopping process takes place by identifying how many decimal places they want their answer approximated to. So if we were to observe our answer at X3, correct to two decimal places, that would be 0 0.77. Moving forward, if we compare X4, correct to two decimal places, that's 0 0.77. So we could have stopped here and we could have said that our answer for our root, because we got two consecutive values which seem to be converging to 0.77 to two decimal places, then that must mean the root is 0.77. Some students tend to test it a further time, a third time, sorry. And if you do test it another time, you can clearly see that correct to two decimal places, it still seems to converge to 0 0.77. So you can simply state by the newton raphson method, a root is 0 0.7722 decimal places, or you can state that uh, the root is converging to 0.77. And uh, basically, the most essential part of using this method once again is making sure you input those exact values into your calculator as much as possible. This method is quite straightforward. The only things they could bring are functions to differentiate in the exponential form. Sometimes they can bring trigonometric functions. That function, once it's differentiable, they can vary it to increase the complexity of the question. And also, if they do not explicitly state the first approximation, when you are choosing your approximation values, try your best to use either one of the interval limits that the question has given. Okay, students, so that's how to apply the newton raphson method. It is a nice, simple formula, and uh, it tends to generate a more accurate answer, I would say, than the uh, bisection region. But in all honesty, based on my uh, experience, I would say if both methods are used to quite a bit uh, of approximations, meaning that perhaps if you were to go to x to the power of 10 in the newton raphson or you were to bisect your region a lot for part one of the bisection method, I think both methods eventually would end up with the same answer. It's just, uh, what's your cup of tea? If you enjoy differentiating and substituting, then newton raphson might be for you. If you enjoy drawing those lines and dividing and dividing and dividing, then bisection method is for you. But both methods are worth memorizing and understanding, and they are very applicable. So I hope this uh, video helped you a lot, and I uh, look forward to my next video, when hopefully I'll be going through another type of uh, method called linear interpolation, and then we would be moving forward with our, our power series and our expansions for Taylor and McLaurin. Good to be with you guys. Bye-bye.